Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com, and I constantly get asked over and over about my user interface, my keybinds, and my add-ons for PC players. I'm going to give you some helpful tips, whether you're on PC or console, to change some of the default gameplay settings that, believe it or not, will actually increase your performance. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and learn something, and also come watch me live on twitch.tv slash DeltiasGaming. So let's go through what I do per character before I start start setting out my journey on Tamriel. Here we are on PC. This is what the user interface is after I hit escape. Now I'm going to go to settings and usually I go top to bottom, left to right. First thing up is video. This might not apply to everybody, but the biggest tip performance wise I can give you is number one, turn shadow quality low or off along with bloom, distortion, sunlight rays, and additional allies effects. These three sliders right here, maximum particle systems, particle suppression distance and view duration. Dragging those back will dramatically increase performance. So dial those back if you have performance issues, especially in Cyrodiil. Now we're gonna move on to audio real quick. The one thing that does help is play audio in the background. This is really nice if you're alt tab and you're queued for something and you'll hear a cue pop, otherwise you wouldn't. Under the gameplay settings, the biggest thing that I can give you a tip on is the combat clues, turn those on and then custom colors. This is default, this is not an add-on. So the default color is really dark and you can't see it, whether it's friendly or enemy. I have mine to 255 on the RGB and the green scale. You can hit test friendly and it'll actually show you and you can adjust the colors so they're much easier to see. And the biggest one to adjust, in my opinion, is this enemy color here, test enemies. That big bright purple is much easier to see than it is with the default dark red, especially if you're colorblind. You might be able to adjust this and really get some big performance. Double tap to dodge. 99% of times when I duel someone who's struggling in PvP, they have this turned on. The reason you don't want to have this turned on is you're going to do herky-jerky movements, right? Like this. And you're going to dodge roll and blow through your stamina. You can see there's a sack multiplier every time I dodge that works up. So dodge roll, dodge roll fatigue becomes more and more expensive. So if you dodge roll consecutively in a short window, you will die nine times out of 10 in PVP. Turn this off. In general, you want to rebind this sucker so you have control of when you dodge, which I'll show you a little bit later. Prevent attacking innocence. I turn this on since I'm a meathead and go around swinging my sword in uh, NPC areas. Quick cast ground ability. So what this means is if I have a skill, for instance, like Blazing Spear, I have to click it once and then the circle comes up and then I can click it again. So wherever my crosshair is going to go is where that is going to be, right? But it requires two clicks. In high action PvE and PvP, you want little clicks, not more. So I turn this on. What that does is it throws it wherever I'm pointing. You have to be a little bit more cognizant of where you're pointing, but you don't have to click twice, it clicks once. Believe it or not, that will increase your performance. If we keep scrolling down, nothing really uh, performance wise, I do turn tutorials off, especially if I'm playing a gazillion characters, I don't like that popping up. Moving on to camera, something that will actually really help you is field of view. You don't want this, right? Great for a thumbnail. Great, look at that Mandalorian Delta here. Not good for performance, why? Because when I scroll out, I can't see as much, right? So let's see this image right here with it all scrolled in. Now, if I go to camera, watch how much more view I get. Look, you can see way more out there. Grabbing this field of view, sliding all the way back will give you more information about your environment. Not to mention if you have a widescreen monitor. I also raise my horizontal position a little bit so my cursor is right above my character. Not necessary, but kind of like a first person shooter. You want your crosshair where you're looking at all times. So matching your horizontal offset and your vertical view. So you see how that crosshair is right above my head when I'm maxed out? This helps me know where I'm pointing my spear or other ground effect AOE, so it's just like a shooter for me. That's camera, and one last tip is turning the screen shake off. This will actually adjust kind of the herky-jerky nature of the screen shake. Turn that thing off. Moving on to interface, there's not much to share here that increases your performance, but in nameplates, there's a lot. Turn these things on. If you're RPing, you can always turn them off. The most important thing to turn on is health bars. You turn on and you do injured on self. Reason why you need to have a lot of information coming in at all times and when you're gonna heal yourself, especially in PVP. If you dip below 75% health, 
you should always start healing yourself and backpedaling and reapplying your buffs. So here in Vardenfell, now watch what happens. I got my bubble up. Boom, instantly I take damage. But when it goes back to full health, my bar isn't shown, right? So when my bubble drops, you're gonna see my health bar being displayed. Now I'm taking damage and I have that little greenish blue line above my head. So you would think that's the only source of information, but you have a couple. You have your attribute bar at the bottom, but you have it over your character. Typically your eyeballs are centered on your character along with looking at your buffs and resources. So typically when I'm playing, I look at my resources, but I tune up to see all the available characters. So when you go up, you do not want to lose track of your health, especially in PvP. So turning it on injured doesn't get too intensive on your user interface, but you're going to have more information when you need it. Trust me, turn it on. Time to die. So again, self shown, really important. Also, if you play with companions, it might be helpful to have friendly NPCs shown as well, especially their health if you're trying to heal them and prevent them from dying. Social, not much here. Combat, a lot here. Ability bar, always show. Highly recommend this unless you're a role player. You want to see what's available, what bar you're on, and what your resources and your cooldowns or whatever you got to maintain. So turn it on always. Attribute bars, you guessed it, always show. You want to know more information, not less. Especially with resource numbers, I go numbers in percentage. Along with ultimate number on. Why is this relevant? I'm usually doing calculations on my character on the cooldowns, how likely I'm going to get ultimate, how close. So you'll see right here, Prism. Casting the Dawn's Wrath ability while in combat generates three ultimate every six seconds. Dawn's Wrath ability on my bar here is Living Dark. So believe it or not, I'm usually doing cooldowns. So basically I'm counting down the time while in combat until I can use another ability and proc this ultimate gen if I have the extra magic. So if I'm using a Dawnbreaker right here and I start attacking this guy right here, I'm looking at my ultimate building when I'm doing a light attack and then I can get a three ultimate real quick doing that, right? And so I know once it hits a certain number, I can get another three ultimate, assuming I have Magicka right there. And also, you know how close you are for an oh crap defensible if you need to survive. So when I'm PvPing or PvEing, the two things I look at at all times are my ultimate and my potions, my user interface, especially PvP. I never want to die with a potion available, especially a tripod or an ultimate available. I want to use those two as a last resort for surviving. So when I get up from a death, I look. Is my potion on a 45 second cooldown? If the answer is no, I failed. Is my ultimate used? If the answer is no, I failed. If those two things are on cooldown. I use them and they're not available to me and I get zerged down and die. That's okay. But that's why it's so important to have these things up so you can get all this information at one time. Moving on down here, combat text I turn on. I don't have an add-on for that. One helpful thing here, if you're using pets, you can do pet healing and pet overhealing, especially on a magic sork. And I would do also show overhealing. What this means is, even though I'm max health, you can see on a Stamplar PvP build, I'm critting for 23,000 even though I'm full health. Why that's relative, you want to know how powerful your heals are. So if you're close to max health and you're hitting yourself constantly for heals, you're never going to know just how powerful your heals are. So it allows you to adjust and uh, adjust your build specifically for more weapon damage, spell damage, or whatever. Buffs and debuffs. So I have an add-on for this. Again, on consoles, you're going to want to turn this on. I don't recommend long effects or permanent buffs that gets in the way of knowing what's up and why. Why are buffs relative and what should you know about them? If you see right there, I cast Race Against Time. So your eyeballs have to start remembering and analyzing these add-ons. You see that fist add-on? I recast that. What is that? If I go to my character's uh, screen, I have a gazillion on because I have Oaken Soul, but it's Minor Force. So I'm looking and training my eyeballs to realize, oh, my Minor Force is down, which is going to allow me to crit damage a lot harder. So I want to maintain that Race Against Time on my front bar. This is only going to come with skill and practice of recognizing those buff. Major Courage, Major Berserk, all these really important ones, but you're never going to know or recognize the add-ons and icons, whether you're in PvE or PvP, unless you turn those on. Turn them on. Start looking at them. Start remembering, because when big ones are up, that's when you want to go into offensive nuke or a defensive 
backpedal if you're in trouble. Accessibility mode, this was added recently on PC, and what that does is it's gonna turn your user interface to kind of like a console player's. So if you're not into that, make sure to turn it off here. You're gonna get prompted at the start of the screen. Now we hit the gameplay or user interface. I wanna touch on keybinds real quick before I get to add-ons. Very, very important. So much so that I'm gonna show you an extra camera. Hi, it's me, Delty, and yes, I'm wearing a tank top. It's very hot. But what I wanna show you is my keybinds. So here's how I have my hand position. I use a Razer Naga MMO mouse with 12 buttons on the side. This is very useful because I can use my WASD to move and I can use my one through five and my six key, which is my potion and still be able to strafe, move and survive. So let me go through these key binds and just kind of show you what it looks like with my actual mouse up. The big important ones here are roll dodge, I use V. Reason being is I can use my mouse to move with these little fingers here or fat fingers, WASD, right? but I want my index finger here to be able to hit the important things. Dodge, break free, synergy, ultimate. So these fingers are always on these four keys, right? But the index finger does all of the work outside of my one through five main spamble abilities. So roll dodge is the V key. That's how I have it set up. I have crouching at the T key. Again, so my index finger can reach it have the interrupt, which is the break free, highly recommend binding to the C key. Doesn't have to be what I'm using, but it needs to make sense for you. You need to be able to move on PC and also hit your break free. Otherwise you're gonna die very easily. Synergy, I have it in a key like the F key to spam a lot. Because in PVE, this is how you get most of your resources back. And in PVP, this is how you do big, huge AOE nukes. Moving down, I have it uh, weapon swap to middle mouse. Reason why is I'm constantly hitting my weapon swap. So it needs to be something that I constantly reliably can do very, very easily. And the middle mouse makes the most sense for me. I've seen people have wild keys. But again, you don't want to take your hands off the most important things. One through five, movement, and then utility skills. I have the quick slot bar as number six. So also on my mouse, you could rebind the uh, command pet if you use that frequently. I have interact with environment E, interact player G. And then I have user interface off as F8 and take a screenshot as F9. Because y'all have so many pretty houses, you just got to take screenshots of them like this. For add-ons, I use Minion Mod Manager. It's like a third party slash additional program that helps you download it and install them. Very, very helpful. Once we come into the add-ons here, we're gonna go over each that I use and why. Action Duration Reminder. It allows you to see your pop-ups and kind of separate your bar. So if I'm on my front bar, I have Living Dark, a very important PVP skill, and then I bar swap. I come back here and I can see the cooldown that's much easier for me to read and tell. So I can extend a ritual and you can see. So whenever your bar you're on, you can kind of see the information. It does a better job than what the default is. Now, if you go to settings and go to add-ons, you can do a little bit more customization to this one. Specifically, the thing I like doing with this one is turning the pop-up alerts off or it just gets too intrusive on my specific character and I turn account-wide configuration on so I don't have to fuss with it every single character. So that's number one. Advanced filters here helps me sort through my junk by doing this, clicking armor, then go light, medium, heavy, shield. It just does it a little bit quicker and sorting through a lot of different stuff, especially when you get in these advanced categories. Auto invite, this is very helpful if you're doing a big, huge group for trials or zerging, you come here and you can set up a keyword. So I type in nugget. Anyone that types it in my guild or in Cyrodiil automatically joins the group and you can reform or do re-invites and auto kick players. If you're a trials leader or you're a Zergling like me, very, very helpful. Bandit's user interface. Talked about this. This is the holy grail of user interfaces. In my opinion, it has its own setting under uh, settings here. Bandit's user interface and does a crap ton of things for you. I'm not going to go through all the settings, otherwise be a 60 minute video. But this important one here is move frames. So you can adjust your frames, your target, your ability timers and buffs, and also your mini map extremely helpful so I don't have a separate mini map. The reticle is what people always ask me about and that's what is through Bandit's user interface. So it kind of doesn't look like a crosshair but looks like a circle. 
You can customize it and follow the leader and do a lot of bigger and better things and you get through here. You can also turn damage statistics on, but I don't do that. I use a separate add-on that's a little bit more detailed. So Bandit's user interface, Battleground Coffers is kind of a niche one here. And what it allows me to do is at a peak, see which characters have tier one alliance rank. In case you don't know, end of campaign rewards of 30 day campaigns give you 50 transmutes. Content creators like me, I try to get 50 transmutes on each of my characters every 30 days. And you can see I'm at 500 at the end of the campaign in five hours. Helps me manage that really easy, but very niche one. Beam me up is very helpful. So if I hit the map key, it will allow me to travel to friends throughout all of my guilds. This is extremely helpful for new players that don't have all the way shrines that need to bebop around. What I'd highly recommend doing if I were you is coming to the home and then going to Guild Finder. Especially as a new player, browse guild. Try to find an active trading or PvE guild that has a ton of active members. Then you can bounce from zone to zone to zone, especially if you have a brand new character or in complete public dungeons like this, you get a sky short and a skill point for killing one of the bosses in there. The best way to get skill points, and it's not even a skill point video. Moving along, BRP Helper, just very simple pop-up specifically for Veteran Black Rose Prison. Bug Eater, very nice because it pops up random bugs all the time that just kind of eats them. Codes Combat Alerts is pretty much a necessity for hardcore trials. If you don't know all the mechanics, it basically holds your hand and tells you, hey idiot, get out of this, or hey stupid, block or dodge now. Very, very helpful. Combat metrics is its own add-on I could show you, but what's really helpful about combat metrics is it's so detailed in what you do damage and why. So let me just go beat on this thing for a second and show you what happens. In keybind, step one for combat metrics is to actually bind the thing. So if I scroll in here through my endless list of add-ons, you can see it's bound to F12. After beating on said thing, you can hit F12 and it gives you a crap ton of information. Munda stone, food, and then all the buffs. You can sort by damage caused, healing done, damage received, and so on. So it's very useful to see where you're parsing at, where your light attack weaves are at, where your damage sources are really at. Especially helpful here is this info tab with this eye. This breaks down your build and your um, champion points and everything in a snapshot. So if you're looking for a really quick build breakdown, this would be it. Craft Store, another very helpful add-on that kind of shows and manages your traits when you're specifically learning. So you can see right here, well-fitted can research. It does a bunch more things for you. So if you're into crafting, try to manage your motifs and your resource, get craft store. If you look at the top right of my screen, I'm inside a Cyrodiil. Four Glamis is under attack with one blue siege and it has a score. This is the add-on called Seer HUD. C-Y-R HUD. So if you're a sweat and like to do Cyrodiil all day, this will give you a ton of information to help go on the offensive or defensive with a quick snapshot of information. All right, one of the most helpful add-ons in the game is right here, Lazy Rit Creator. I grab this crafting right here. It gives me clothing, okay? Come over here, and then it starts automatically crafting the stuff if I have it for me telling me what item to do and so on before you either had to mass craft stuff put it in your game and pull it out or kind of like actually pay attention halfway to what you're doing so that's a lot better as you can just basically drag drop bang click hold your hand for you it's perfect and it even opens up the crap for you I might as well turn this quest in. Next add-on up that's very helpful is GCD bar I have it enabled and you'll see a bar after I use an ability in case you don't know, there is a one second timer on your non-channel to cast it ability. So I like, see this, there's one second animation and kind of slides down. That's helpful for light attack weaving. So you see this, bang one, two, three, so on. So if you're trying to do light attack weaving and really get your weave tight, this is a good visual indicator that helps with that. Another really helpful add-on is Dynamic CP. What this does is it shows all the text for the CP so you don't have to guess where to go and what to do. You can actually have a gazillion presets. You can do Magpar, PvE, PvP, bang, hit apply, and it'll actually go through and slot all those things, including your passives, and save it for you. And that add-on is Dynamic CP. Dressing room here, um, there's a couple of different common ones, but when I go to skills, it pops it up. 
So what this does is kind of like a mini armory. It swaps out all of your skills and your gears with one click of a button right here. You have to set it up. So you need to equip all of your build and then hit shift click to save it. Same thing with your skill line. So let's say I want to go over here, right? I have a gazillion preload out. So let's go here. Let's go PVP bar one. And then I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit save by holding shift and clicking that go to the back bar and hit save and it repeats everything. And if I want to equip this build, I click here. That's different than the armory system. Okay. The armory system right here saves basically the same things. But what's nice about this is saves Munda stone. It says if you're a werewolf, your outfit, and your champion point specifically. Dressing room, consider that something to use in a trial or in a dungeon when you want to swap abilities, but not necessarily morphs, attributes, and Munda Stone. Really good to have add on. Moving down the list, I'm just going to show and talk about a little bit of these. Harvin's improved skill window. This is mainly a niche add on that shows you the morph choices. Um, really good for content creators. Hodor's Reflex is really kind of a sweaty PvE DP to kind of see where you rank if you're doing trials. This is very useful if you're competitive and doing PvE competitively and you want to talk trash to people if you got really good high DPS. Inventory Insight, one of my favorite add-ons. So what you have to do is keybind this like some of the other ones, right? So we're going to set up a keybind. I do F11. When I hit F11, it's going to sort through every single character that has this active. Right, so if I want to see, search my entire inventory for Magma Incarnate, you can see I use a lot of them. It's going to see where this is and who has it. So you can see Tom Shanks has a medium divines with magic. And then I just go down the list and it tells me who has it and how many on which character. So if you have a gazillion gear sets and banking storage and everything, it will show you and display inventory insight. It's a must. And then moving down, Lights of Meridia is a good add-on for group play. If you have a group member, it'll put a beam above their head especially useful for PvE and PvP because you can see where the leader is going and follow along. It also sorts by roles and colors. So damage, healing, and tanking will have specific different colors. Let me show you. So here's my friend Jace and you can see that he has this big blue beam above his head. And so it sorts by the actual user's role as a DPS. Very, very helpful in PvP to kind of follow the crown. Next up, we have Lost Treasure. This is very helpful to dig up writ surveys. So you have a bunch of writ surveys. So we'll just actually point it on the map. Very, very helpful. Map pins, another extremely helpful add-on. If I hit the map and I go to filters, it'll have a bunch of different stuff here. Lore books you've discovered or have gotten. Sky shards, treasure maps, treasure chest. Very useful for some mythic leads. Undaunted achievements. You can see time rift for psychic orders. Portals, uh, also for oblivion portals and where they spawn. Incredibly useful add-on that adds to the map. And then we have a couple niche ones here. Potion maker, obviously, to save and make uh, potions very easily. Sorting from the specific effects that you want to have. And Tamriel Trade Center, if you're into trading. Pretty resource intensive, but allows you to get a really nice snapshot of the market. And then Rit Worthy is good if you're doing master writs. And you're at someone's house that has all the writ stations. XL Gear Banker is the last one that I use. And why? this is useful i'll summon my little guy here and i go here so i go to bank and you'll see this pop up here you'll notice i have like a gazillion set saved so on the left hand side you basically equip your gear that you want right so let's go to mag test i'm gonna hit edit current set i'm gonna add slots to here and then i'm gonna hit save so what I can do is strip down and then throw all these gear sets on my character's inventory into the bank. I can hop on another character and pull them all out by hitting withdraw. Very, very helpful if you log in from character to character. Like let's say you have boss A's and Kinra's on a PVE DPS, but you don't want to play on that DPS. You want to swap and not have to have gear on every single character. XL Gear Banker. User interface takes a while to get sorted. Very helpful add-on. Well, gang, that was a lot of information. I hope you got something out of this, whether it's user interface, keybinds, or a gazillion add-on. There's way more and a lot more in-depth detail that I could have gone. But this will just give you a snapshot because people constantly ask me about this. So hopefully this helped you and you can do a little bit better, especially in PvP with those user interface and 
key binds. It will make a big difference. Trust me. Just like anything, it won't be natural at first. Stick with it and give it some time. Double tap the dodge, rebind, all that stuff. Crank out the camera and you'll do a little bit better. Trust me. Thanks for watching. Smash that like if this helped you. Hit that subscribe. Come over to twitch.tv and watch me and check out my builds at deltiasgaming.com. Thanks for watching.